Okay, in Europe, there are five countries, sometimes called the pigs. P-I-I-G-S. Yeah, P-I-I-G-S. These are Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. These countries are pulling Europe's economy down, but the worst offender is Greece. Greece, um, and the land of Greece, you can retire at 52. Well, what's wrong with that? Simply, that means the other people who are still working cannot support you. Um, I mean, well, a few years back, the Swiss, Switzerland voted whether to extend their vacations from four weeks to six weeks, and they voted more than 60% to not extend their vacations. The Swiss are the wise people of our society world. What's wrong with a six-week vacation? Well, while you're taking time off, somebody else has to be doing the work. I mean, yeah, the, Swiss, the Swiss decided six weeks was too much. But in Greece, they want to retire. They, will, they want to pay a lot of people for not working. So 50, they have a 52-year retirement. Well, guess what? When the government finally told them, hey, we can't support all this socialism, the Greek people rebelled, and it brought, it's about the stock market down several times, but the stock market's always come back up. Greece has also defaulted on its debt. The European Union regrets having taken Greece in, even though they knew Greece had probably felt like, hey, the rest of us are strong enough to pull Greece up. They weren't. Instead, Greece pulled them down. Um, the land of Socrates. It's socialism has at times brought down the whole world's economy. Now, the euro, take this with a grain of salt, folk. This was true a couple years ago, more than it is now, that the euro was falling rapidly. Um, it might still be, and it's believed by some that the, euro, the euro's fall, well, the euro's fall would bring down the whole world's economy. The problem with the world is, the Western world, we feel like we have an entitlement mentality that you're entitled, and you don't want to take responsibility. A lot of, you, of Westerners don't want to take responsibility. And uh, this eventually is going to cost us. Rights, entitlements, live any old way you choose, and expect if you choose to live the wrong way and get in trouble, the government's going to bail you out. Um, bad business. All right. With that, oh yes, India, I mentioned that. India has a lot of inefficiency and inequality. Inequality in land ownership and in farm production. The rich can produce a lot more than the poor. Um, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I will now. Pakistan was originally, and I went to, there's no sea in Pakistan. All right. Pakistan originally had two places, one in the east and one in the west. They were a thousand miles apart. But eventually, the East Pakistan country formed a nation of Bangladesh in 1971. I was in graduate school at the time, and it's called it hey, the newest nation in the world. But east Pakistan has become Bangladesh. It's not the newest nation in the world anymore. All right. Um, Yes, now something else that I consider important. Far Eastern peoples believe in strong family values, self-sacrifice, and hard work, saving their money. Lockheed would try to hire people from other countries and to encourage them to buy our aircraft. They say, oh, we have so many hundred workers from your country working for us. They hired a Korean girl one time, about a Korean woman, she worked to wire harnesses, and while the rest of us were grumbling about wanting to strike, she said, you don't know how off you are. You don't know why you, you should live in other places. Where, but to, it was making very little money. These Korean people were bunching together, 10 and 15 of them in a house, which is illegal. Somehow they get away with it. I, mean, I guess it's illegal. I mean, 10 or 15 of them in an ordinary dwelling house would be designed to handle a family of four or five. But they bunch up together, sleep on the sofa, sleep on the floors, or whatever, and uh, somehow try to make use of just one or two bathrooms, or three maybe they had. 
but uh, they would live together like that, share the rent, and uh, making American wages, they could save up a lot of money and save it up pretty fast. I didn't mention when Chiang Kai-shek took over Formosa, he took some four million Chinese with him. And that's why for the land of Formosa today is half Chinese and half native Formosans. Chiang Kai-shek continued to be highly repressive, but after he died, the new government had formed in Formosa is less repressive than it was before. Okay, I'll resume then for this where I left off. We're left off Tuesday. By the way, my, what my plans are is to finish my, with my lecture notes, finish the chapter, and then review for probably maybe for whatever time I have left before the test. The test to begin at 1. Um, Japan's gross national product is more than that of Britain and France combined. They're, I mean, it's a national product. They produce more than Britain and France combined. They're the world's leading exporter. Now, in our case, in our country, we import more than we export. But Japan is the world's leading exporter. Their per capita standard of living is better than that of a lot of Western countries. In the land of Japan, only 1% of the Japanese receive welfare compared to 10% in the United States. If the Japanese government feels like you can work, they will not give you welfare. In other words, they say, if you can work, find work. And folk, there is work to be found. Now, if you hear of some man who's unemployed for years on end, it's because he's not willing to take the job he could get. Now, last year in the spring, I had two classes. They were both taken from me because some professor, full-timers, can take a class from us anytime they need to. So I went and got a job at Lowe's, working as an ordinary worker at Lowe's. It's not too, I mean, I don't consider that beneath me. I will work at a restaurant if I have to. I mean, you know, but a lot of, you can, if, I, if you see a healthy man who's been unemployed for three or four years, you know he's not willing to take what he could get. Every restaurant you go into is begging for workers. And I've been to some, several of them here of late, and they almost always have a sign, help wanted, apply within, or apply online, or whatever. Um, but uh, you can find a job. Um, illegitimacy in Japan is low when compared to most Western countries. No, they have a strong family, uh, more sense of morality. Um, now, they're not always well in Japan now. We're, we're talking a good minute about their problems. The world noticed the Jap Japanese progress by the 1980s. I mean, in 1955, our Secretary of State, Dulles, by name, said, Japan makes nothing the United States wants. But in 1980, they, put our, they scared our automobile companies, even our big three, Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors, and forced our automobile countries, companies to make better cars because the Japanese were putting out cars that every American at the time believed were better than American cars. That's not as true now as it was then. It's been called the Japanese miracle. Now, a lot of people refer to these Asian nations' prosperity as the little tigers, They believe that these little countries might grow up to become superpowers. That has not happened yet. Uh, they referred to this um, rising power group in the Far East as the Pacific which I believe is the title of your chapter, uh, chapter 30. Pacific Century. In other words, they believe that within a hundred years, the far eastern countries would rise up and become superpowers. Again, it hasn't happened yet. But now, Japan has problems still. Doesn't everybody? 
um, there has been a higher increase in crime, there's been political instability. Also, Japan has the highest suicide rate in the world. What brings about suicide among their young people? Okay, part of it goes back to their educational system. The Japanese school year is 240 days long. Realize that is 60 days longer than ours. Basically, they get no vacation. I mean, well, they might get a week off here and there. But essentially, you go to school all year round. In other words, uh, no three months off in the summer. Then you you go one day or well, one week you might be in one grade the next week you're in a higher grade without any three months off summer vacation 240 days you know they go to school year-round they have a high success rate academically however now this is something folk you'll not read about in your book but I have read it they get this success rate using the paddle or called corporal punishment they will paddle students, and sometimes they have paddled the students so hard that the student is killed. You might ask, well, can't the parents sue in Japan? No. The parents cannot sue if a teacher paddles a child. I mean, there was a case in Japan, the baseball league one time, where the manager socked a player. The player sued, and the courts ruled, well, you conducted yourself in such a way as to provoke the manager, hit you, therefore the manager was justified in socking you. Now, that can't happen here in the United States, I don't think. But in Japan, they have a different attitude towards authority. You obey the authority, and you're taught that from the time you're young. You step in line. And if you get out of line, the authority has the right to strike you, hit you, paddle you, whatever. Um, but the pressure on a student to excel is really, really high. And this leads a lot of young people to commit suicide. And more than once, the Japanese men and women will get together on the internet and decide we're all going to commit suicide at a certain time on the clock. We'll all commit suicide together, but you do it here and you do it here and do it. And then at a given stroke of the clock, several Japanese young men and women will commit suicide all at once. Um, Again, maybe a lot of that's due to overpressurizing their children to excel. Japanese parents are really proud if their kids do well in school. Now, they are accused of discriminating against minorities, especially they do not like Koreans. They discriminate against Koreans. All right, folks. Uh, some of you might say I'm not making a good comparison. So Japanese do not want foreigners to come in and live among them. And they don't have to build a wall. They've got hundreds of miles of ocean separating them from any place else. Just like New Zealand. New Zealand is a thousand miles from anywhere else. So they don't need a wall. They have a natural, you might say, wall. But they have then clearly defined borders. I mean, you know, hey, this is the sea and this is the land. If you're on the land, you're in Japan. If you're on the, not in the... Japan, you're on the sea. So they, they have, they don't, again, they don't have any problem with building a wall. But uh, they have a history of only wanting their own people in their own country. And that is still largely true to this day. Um, now, Japan has been accused of forcing Korean women to serve as prostitutes for their soldiers during World War II. The Japanese have never admitted to this and never apologized for it, much to the uh, consternation of the Koreans. Japan has been slow at admitting to the problem or compensating the, the people they offended, particularly the Koreans. And it has been said that Japan does not allow its students to hear about World War II. Now, I taught this class, I guess, more than 10 years ago. At the end of the semester, at this point in the semester, I had no idea, but a young man walked up to me. He'd been in my class the whole semester. He said, I'm from Japan. I asked him, well, has anything I said about Japan offended you? He said, oh, no. He said, I'm glad to hear the other side. We're not taught this in Japan, particularly about the Japanese role in starting World War II. He said, we've never heard it from this angle, and I'm glad to hear it from a different angle. Um, 
But anyway, they are not taught World War II the same way we are, the same way it's taught outside. Um, they're not taught that World War II started when they started invading all their neighbors and then they invaded the United States base of Pearl Harbor and got the United States involved. That's not told in Japan the same way it is here. Now, one thing Japan does not export is farm products. They have very little land that can be farmed, partly because it's over the land is crowded, so it must buy a lot of its food from outside. Now, this is a hot issue still. They have been accused of unfair trade practices, like, for instance, I once heard that an American farmer could, could put beef on a Chinese table at maybe two or three dollars a pound. The Japanese farmer, because there's so little land, has to charge twenty dollars a pound to put beef on a table. So what do the Japanese do? They slap a high tariff on American beef to keep American beef out so that their people are forced to pay $20 a pound for Japanese grown beef. And well, what you might say, what if they lowered the tariff? That would mean their cattle farmers would go completely out of business, which might not be a bad thing, but it would lower, it would lower the cost of all food in Japan. Now, our present president has decided to tackle a problem. Your book won't mention it, of course, your book was written before Donald Trump was elected. But our present president has said to these countries, if you're going to slap a high tariff on your product, I mean, on our product, we're going to have to slap a high tariff on yours. You bring your tariff down, we'll bring our tariff down. And uh, this has led to trade wars, but at least he's dealing with the issues, something the previous presidents did not do. Um, Japan has accused its people of forcing them to live substandard. Now, the average Japanese worker, from what I understand, lives in an apartment, maybe as big as from here, there's the room, and in this apartment he has basically one room, and in that one room he does probably have his own commode and a bed and a kitchen. The room combines as a bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, dining room, uh, all of it combined into one. It's really just a small flat. One room, maybe two rooms at the most. And this is how a lot of the Japanese workers live. Um, now, your book gives a figure, and I think it might be obsolete. 17% of the Japanese people are over 65. It's the highest percentage of people over 65 in the world. Now why, I mean, what's wrong with having a high percent of people over 65? It means that they are not having babies, pure and simple. They have a growing population, their people are getting older, and there are not that many young people to uh, make up for it. Um, in the land of Japan also, children wear uniforms. I want to say this about wearing uniforms. Some of our public schools have tried it. It actually has been known to improve the deportment of your students. Now, when I graduated from high school in 1967, there were dress codes. Boys had to cut their hair a certain length. Girls, all the girls still wore dresses. The dresses had to be a certain length. But then after I got out, the Supreme Court made decisions that made it almost impossible to enforce dress codes. And part of that, I think the result was that deportment and conduct went way, way, way down. The way you dress, particularly the way kids dress in elementary and high school, has a lot to do with their academic performance. I was appalled when I went back to my high school in 1972. I went there to try to apply for a job. And I saw the boys with beards and long hair and ragged blue jeans, and the girls wearing ragged blue jeans and dirty sweatshirts. And in general, in five years' time, this school went from where the boys and girls dressed nicely to where the boys and girls were all allowed to dress as tramps. Um, beards were illegal when I was in school. They were looked on as being a sign of rebellion. 
but then again, the Supreme Court stepped in. There is a correlation between academic achievement and dress, folk, at least in young students. If any of you want to argue the point, I'll, I won't argue, but I'll listen to you. Any of you have any thoughts on that? Yes? We had to wear a uniform in high school, and I liked it personally. Well, there, some public schools have started wearing them, or at least they were, and the misbehavior went down, the grades went up, conduct improved. Um, this, but again, you have people who just simply won't. Some Japanese youth have turned towards a life of complete hedonism. The word hedonism means purely pleasure-seeking. Hedonism comes an old Greek word. Live, eat, drink, and make merry, for tomorrow we're going to die anyway. What's the use to try to excel? Just what little life we have, short life, let's just live it up with no restraints, no moral restraints. So some Japanese youth have rebelled against... Um, against the exacting academic norms. Japan has tried to achieve sexual equality. Japanese women can divorce their husbands, but again, their divorce rate is lower than it is in the United States, even though in the United States, the divorce rate is improving. However, in Japan, women take mostly the lower paying jobs and the higher paying jobs still go to the men. This is in the book, folks. Uh, the average salary for a woman is half the average salary for the men. The Japanese feminist movement doesn't have a whole lot of steam to it, not a lot of vigor, not a lot of support, not like you'd find in the United States movement. And again, I'm repeating now what I've just been saying all along. Japan has a very, very low birth rate, along with an aging population. And uh, some people believe within 50 or more years, or maybe more, a little bit more than 50 years, Japan will become an infant for almost empty islands. Um, now, the Japanese do have a little bit more equality in pay than we do. In the United States, the CEO makes, now this is, these figures are old, but the CEO makes 85 times as much as the average employee. Now I'll say this, when I was at Lockheed, Lockheed's CEOs would make multiplied millions of dollars, three, four, five, six million or more dollars, while we made maybe 50,000 a year or 60,000 a year. In Japan, the CEO's rate is only 17 times the rate of the average employee. Now, folk, again, I am not pushing for equality of pay. CEOs, persons who really can manage on that level, deserve to make more than the rest of us. Now, some of you might not like that, might not agree with it, but I believe if a man can become a CEO, it calls for special leadership abilities and special talents that most of us don't have. I know I don't. But it calls for abilities, and they are deserving of more. I do not agree with equal pay. For everybody. Um, you have to let your more talented people forge ahead. Japan is the least religious country in the world, probably the most materialistic nation in the world. Shintoism is a religion with the most professed followers, and when you ask most Japanese what religion are you, they'll probably say Shintoism, but they're very indifferent. Um, well, now here's the thing about religious indifference, folks. I've seen it in my own family. My grandfather Cunningham was indifferent, but my father was extremely religious. A lot of times when the parents are indifferent, the children will go the other way or vice versa. When the parents are extremely, almost fanatically religious, the children will become much, much less so to the point sometimes of indifference. So in the land of Japan, a lot of young people are out to join the cults because they sense the lack of, the lack of religion among their parents. 
So they decide to join the cults. Um, a lot of Japanese were badly demoralized by the defeat because throughout its history Japan had never lost a war. And they feared Western culture would encroach on Japan and destroy it. So they, were, they shunned Christianity. Only 1% of the Japanese are Christian. Um, all right, anything else to be said about Japan? You might not see Japan on a map in a few generations unless they change their ways really fast. They have to start producing children or they will die off.